Welcome to round three coverage of the 2021 PDGA Tim Selinski U.S. Masters Championships presented by Innova. I am the PDGA's own Grant Zucker alongside Stephen Taylor, cameraman extraordinaire. Joining me in the booth for the very first time well, I think, as we watch some uh, really impressive MP50 action yes. here at the impressive Harmony Benz Disc Golf Course in Columbia, Missouri, flying over hole number one right now, a 777-foot par five creek in play all the way down including directly in front of this slightly elevated green it is a bear of a hole to have to start uh, around with that is for sure this is going to be really fun to watch introducing our lead card players in the mp50 division for round three. First up on the box you're going to see patrick brown Starting off the day at 23 under par. Really, really playing impressively this week. He's got himself quite a cushion just halfway through the tournament. Playing from the white tees for those in the know and going all the way over the creek and well up the fairway. He's, he's okay there. A little obstructed if he was considering going for the green in two. Um... Frankly, I don't know if he would have gone for the green and two if his shot had landed in a little bit different place. We'll see what he decides to do here in just a moment. Blake Needles now on the box at 15 under par. Blake, a left-handed player that doesn't utilize a run-up for any shot. I enjoy watching him and his drives, that is good. That is exactly where he needs to be. You know, it kind of looks like it hurts. <laughs> it does. He really torques on the disc, but he hits all the positions just right. And it's also fun uh, to see a lefty navigate how many bends. Jay Yeti Redding. <laughs> Stepping onto the box at 12 down, played his way up to the lead card uh, during round two. Just a legend. He's in good shape there. Over the creek with ease. We're going to get to see uh, some infamous Yeti putts during the course of this round. I have absolutely no doubt. And speaking of legends, we have Barry Schultz here. Barry Schultz at 11 down, looking to make something of a run. And uh, if you've ever watched Barry, you know he will. He's got a plan, too. He's not going for the creek. Always. Just a mid-range. He's a very calculating player, which means we're going to get to see him really think his way around this course. Placement shot. Oh, yet he's going for it. Definitely has a high speed disc in his hand. Throwing it low. Ooh. You know, I thought he was going for it as well, um, but he threw it so low. I, I think he was obviously just playing for a little bit of a skip and get things over there to the left a bit. And Blake is going to have an interesting angle there. You know, there in two certainly can go for the green. Patrick, Ooh. one tree to miss. Patrick has played his entire U.S. Masters tournament to this point bogey-free. Flirting with that out-of-bounds rope. Very close. As I said, Barry has a plan. I don't think he planned to be this far left. And that's why. Yes. Ricochet's out-of-bounds.
lake just, just short. A little short yes mm -hmm. doesn't carry so he'll take his relief on this side of the creek oh that was nice the number of upshots that flash this basket on number one is just incredible <laughs> see what yeah. i mean yes Yeti just a couple of steps away. I'm sure he's happy with that. Yeah. Just a couple of steps away for his birdie. And everybody just putting themselves in position for a drop in or close to it here on hole number one. But we're going to have some movement in the, uh, perhaps not in the standings, but in the relative gaps between our players here right off the bat during round three. Great putt. Good job, Blake. Patrick Brown off the band. He'll be dropping in for his first bogey of the championships. Meanwhile, Jay Yeti Redding stepping up with a drop in for birdie. And instantly we have a two stroke swing. Of course, we had an 11 stroke gap between those two players. So Jay has done the first of his many tasks for the day. Get the lead down to single digits if you can, and then worry about things as the round goes along. Off to hole two. Hole number two here at Harmony Bends, a 536-foot par four from the white tees, a sharp dogleg to the right with the creek. Not terribly in play until you get to the green. Uh, there's just there's so much land there to the right that you still don't want to be in because you're awfully obstructed. Yes, and you want to be very careful to not get into the out of bounds, into the water. Six to nine feet, depending on which direction you try to take two steps from that basket. That's what you've got before you're out of bounds. Jay taking the larger gap. And he'll be fine with that. Some of our players will push the green. Patrick with a nice throw there. Comfortable shaping something. This is a hole that sets up nicely for both right and left-handed players. Blake showing you the lefty line there. Barry with just a mid-range off the tee. Working the plan that he's already set in stone in his mind. Jay with a nice throw there. Electing not to try to overdo the left to right shaping. He's, he's content, as good a putter as he is, he's content with getting pin high off to the left and then dealing with uh, a makeable putt. Barry really playing the percentages here as well. You can par from there. Difficult putt to go for with that backdrop. Patrick Brown, an extremely fast player, and puts himself just inside the edge of the circle. Nope. Nope. Barry wants no part of 
that out of bounds. He'll be happy with par. Patrick. That's that's where it's at. For birdie. Great job, Patrick. Gets his stroke back. And Jay. Jay Yeti Redding, a classic putt. Good job, buddy. Everything about that putt, just iconic. And we'll clean up our pars here on hole number two. Off and running to hole number three, 232 feet, an uphill par three. From this tee pad, you cannot see the basket, but you know that this tree just off to the right of your screen right there, that's, the, uh, that's your alignment aid for the basket. Obviously, you don't want to hit the tree. You're going to choose to go right or left of it and shape your disc back to this pin location. Super steep drop off, right and long. And Jay with the box. Soft. Electing to go with the soft. Anheuser Ooh. got a little unlucky at first and then lucky with that roll away. I think he's okay there. These players just make this particular type of shot look, look so easy. Off the wow. koozie. There's that tree we were talking about. Blake puts himself down to the right. It's not out of bounds over there, but it's very, very steep. Very cheeky with it. Skitters down to just a round circle's edge. Blake with his upshot. He had to throw that disc really hard just to get it that far up the fairway. Ooh. Yeah, Barry just a little bit short, but safe. Here's Blake to save par. Oh, oh right boy, off the, top. off the top, off the rocks. Hmm. Off the off left. Left side of the chains. Steeply uphill. Blake lucky to have not gone further down the hill. He needed that. Yeah, yeah. To just sort of stop the bleeding there, taking a bogey, but not making things any worse. What a tap in for Bird, just, though. That's that's what you want. <laughs> no, I'll take eighteen of those today. Thanks. <laughs> All right, cleaning up on three, walking a bit further up the hill where our players will play down the same distance that they just played up. 288 feet a par three for hole number four here at Harmony Bends. Again, the tee box for, uh, for these MP50 players pressed back far enough that you can't see the hole. You can't see the basket from the tee box. You actually have to, if you want to, you can run forward about 40 feet or so in order to see where your shot lands. This camera angle gives you a great idea of what our players are looking at, though. That's the height you want on this hole. Yeah, I can't emphasize enough the challenge it is to throw down because we so rarely have to do it. Uh, you and I discovered that some this morning playing we sure here, here at Harmony Bends and uh, just trying to make yourself throw down when everything in your form is 
created not to throw the disc right at your own feet. Jay has a nice look for birdie. Yes, he does. It's a great shot. Barry, this is exactly the kind of shot that he enjoys. Throwing a slow disc and just shaping that shot right down the gap. Oh! A little unfortunate at the end. Blake shaping a lefty line for any lefties that might find themselves at Hominy Bends. That's exactly what you want to do on this hole. He can use the slight slope of the green down there to his advantage. Righties, it tends to pan out uh, and give you quite a distant look. Barry off the rim. Hasn't dialed his putt in quite yet today. Patrick in for, for a par. Barry in for par. Let's see if Jay will get his birdie. From Barry. about 22nd, or nice. 27, excuse me. Puts that in. He let the other players play out of order. Uh, there were uh, players on a nearby hole that were going to be distracting for that longer putt. So he had, that's why he had Barry and, and Patrick just go ahead and finish out. Played for his birdie. Attempt. Good job. Solidly in for birdie. We move on to hole number five, a 460-foot par four, extremely uphill, and then off to the right, and then sort of a bend back to the left. So you're able to shape your shots here. You, you need to do basically two opposite things. You need to throw something up and right, and then something down and left with a green that slopes away further to the left, so you really need to control that angle into the green for your uh, second shot. All four of our players looking to put their disc up there on top of the plateau. Jay just may have cleared those rocks there. You, need, you only need about 225 feet to get above the rocks. You need about 250 to get up where you'll have a decent stance. Patrick, not quite to the plateau. Blake. Nice drive by Blake. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. 250 feet of distance, probably 310 to 330 feet of power, give or take, to, to get that steeply up this hill. It's like throwing onto the top of a three-story building right here. Barry's in perfect shape. There. Wow. One of the better drives I saw that all was, week. That was really pretty. Pretty shot. Patrick, just a bit too low there. You can get away with a low skipping shot on this hole because of the uh, the hard pan. Not a lot of grass on this uh, steep hole here. Steep fairway, excuse me. Put the visor on backwards and upside down for this shot. Blake Needles <laughs> just off the edge of a tree that he needed to miss and shape that shot around. That's the shot Patrick needed. Yeah, he's not happy with, with the par here, but it took a pretty impressive shot to make par possible for him, so hopefully he can build on that. As Barry, just 190 out. 
That was beautiful. Mmm. Like going from tree to tree today. The unlucky tree there. And then the arguably more unlucky rolled away. So he'll have a circle's edge putt coming back. Just off the front of the cage. Blake beginning to lose pace with the other players in the group, but a lot of golf to be played. Doesn't it feel like the Yetis had this exact putt already? Yes. <laughs> About three times. He has a good view. <laughs> good job. <laughs> yeah, is it in there you go. Jay doing exactly what he needs to do to try to keep Patrick from getting too far out in front by himself. He's putting some pressure on Patrick. Maybe a little bit. Uh, it's still a comfortable lead in general, right? But when you feel like you've given back already two or three strokes through just five holes of play, you're not feeling great about things. So we'll see how Patrick responds. A couple of pretty gettable holes uh, here in the near future, talk, starting with hole number six, 367, excuse me, 235 feet here for hole number six. Pretty sharp dog leg to the left after some distance. That big tree right there is uh, you want to break before that tree, assuming you can get to that tree down this narrow fairway. Jay with a nice birdie look. Some of these shots will look like they're missing their line to the to the inside or to the tight side. They're really not. They're they're going for this seemingly tight line uh, on purpose. And you can see why. Another impressive shot. That was Barry Schultz. Yes. Now on the box, Patrick Brown. Patrick with a smooth drive, and he is also also there. Patrick utilized height there to stop the disc. You can see all four of our players throwing high-speed drivers, even though the hole is just 235 feet. So you've got to find a way to control the speed into this green. It doesn't set up very well for lefties who are throwing backhand. That shot just inches from being really, really good, though. Catches one of the last trees before this wide open space. Patrick Brown now from about 20. And in. There you go, Patrick. Very in for birdie. And Jay also in for birdie. I think Blake's ready just to go to hole seven. Yeah, I think he is as well. Hole number seven, 
This is a really fun and exciting hole to, uh, to play. All downhill, 367 feet from the white tees. A gap that is wider the lower you are able to throw your uh, tee shot. And then down onto this wide open landing zone where shots can look really, really good until they react with the ground. And then you may find yourself skipping 45 feet away. Or you may be able to land fairly short and sort of trundle right on up to this basket. But as you can see, that sort of triangle-shaped gap, if you can keep your shot low, stay down. That's okay. A little bit of a roll away, but I think most players, if you gave them the option to take that result, they would just take that result every time. Most players, maybe not players of this caliber. Barry just a little bit short. Again, Patrick able to keep the nose of the disc down. Most players, myself included, when I try to throw down, I throw more or less straight. And as you can see, a straight shot from this particular tee pad will put you right into the canopy. <laughs> yeah. Blake in the fairway. Shaping things nicely, just didn't get a lot of forward progress once he hit the ground. And now with this for birdie. Oh. Just a tad short. Patrick, from about 45, there is a drop-off that's difficult to see immediately after the basket from this angle, and that's why Patrick chose to just lay this putt up. Jay, though, with a green light. Oh. oh. The first putt of substance that Jay has missed today, and that was certainly a forgivable miss from that distance. Patrick for his par. And Jay for his par. And Blake. For his par. Stepping on to hole number eight, back up the hill, just 192 feet. Obviously a par three, but what roughly a, 30 feet in elevation. And here. what a beautiful hole. This oh, it's is. gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. No real out of bounds to speak of, but again, you're throwing to a, a basket that has been placed on top of a three story building, basically. Designer John Hope really challenging players with shots that you don't see very often. Quite the backstop, though. If you want to throw something fast and, and hard, you can do so. Jay may not be happy with that. Yeah, he's probably circle's edge, but this is a much more challenging circle's edge putt than most. Barry is just so smooth. Scary oh. in the basket. Oh, boy. Wow. Off the koozie. Even with the terracine uh, up there on the green, it's still a steeply sloped uh, circle. Any putt, your stance will not be comfortable. Well, Patrick has a nice birdie look there as well. Patrick. Not worried about your stance when you're putting from <laughs> four feet away from the basket. Oh, Blake just nipped that tree off to the right. See if he can get his birdie here. Just 
a little short to the left. That was an aggressive play. He, he throws his putts really, really high from distance. I liked seeing that aggressive uh, attempt there. Patrick had an easy, easy look at hole eight. Well, uh, I've, I've I've missed those. <laughs> I have as well. When your feet are at the level of the basket rim, <laughs> even when you're just a few feet away, it's awkward. I've missed more than I care to count. <laughs> It really is awkward and it can get in your kind of into your head. Jay cleans up his par and steps on to hole number nine. Nine strokes back of the lead held by Patrick Brown. This is 684 foot par five down and over a valley that shouldn't come into play unless you hit a tree and, and find yourself ricocheting down there. Then a bend to the left and finishing on a left to right sloped uh, circle area here with a very steep drop off just beyond. Barry needs a control drive here. And he's got it. Yeah, looking for that little bit of left-hand finish on the end of that flight. Manages to get it. We'll see how obstructed his view is of the hole location here in just a moment after Patrick. Not lucky enough to get through. He's going to be down in that. You know Jay's going to put there. everything he has into this. Good job. Interesting seeing uh, Jay take the right-hand gap. Our other two players took the left-hand gap. Now our left-handed player, Blake Needles, taking the left-hand gap. On the left. I believe he's okay there. Yeah, he'll be happy with that shot. I walked over and looked at this live for Patrick, and it's there's nothing. So Patrick decides to lay up back into the fairway. Mm -hmm. Still not as far as he'd like to be. He's going to have to crest a hill and then come down. Blake with a little bit of a roller? Yeah, I'm not I'll be honest, I don't know if he intended for that shot to, you know, ultimately become a roller or if he was just going with such a sharp angle that he had to just deal with the consequences. But this course, and I think you'd agree, the kind of course where you deal with your first problem first, whether it's hitting a gap or a certain uh, height on your flight line, you, you yes. make sure to execute that first, and then you sort of worry about the next problem. W one throw at a time. Mm -hmm. Or even during the course of one flight, one problem at a time. <laughs> Barry up to attackable position there. Patrick with his forehand and he may have a line on the left side. That Jay's third from near the tee pad for the next hole. Softly oh. in. Jay going in between the trees too. Yeah, he had a gap over there, an interesting one. That's basically the pathway from 9 basket to 10 T, and he was able to play right up that pathway. Very softly in. Patrick decides to go on the left. A little short. Leaving himself a pretty distant putt. You can see the wind came up for just a few moments here in this round. 
And that may have affected. And Blake had a tough angle there. Yeah. That, that was a very him. tough shot. It shows again, yeah. It really did get quite windy for just a few moments at this point in the round. As they're playing into a headwind as well. Favorable skip off of the branch. <laughs> it sure was. Patrick trying to save a bogey. And he'll take a double bogey. This for a three-stroke swing. Wow, there you go, Jay. Good job. The Yeti yell. And the lead drops to six. There's Barry Smartly in, and Patrick will clean up. Excuse me, uh, Blake will clean up. Patrick in a play first. Patrick has been focused in all week. Blake takes care of that. Yeah, struggling a little bit this afternoon. Yeah. But again, our lead down to six all of a sudden. Jay just down by six as we head into the back nine here during round three. FP, excuse me, MP50 action here at Harmony Bend Disc Golf Course in Columbia, Missouri. Stay tuned to PDGA.com for all of your details of this exciting Tim Selinski U.S. Masters Disc Golf Championships. <laughs> 